when you get to the point where we're going to look at states of matter and chemical reaction, uh, we now need to kind of start making some assumptions. So if we're looking at a single replacement or double replacement reaction, we are going to assume that that is being facilitated in water. Okay? And so the assumption for being taking place in water means that for any ionic compound, I'm going to call them salts, to keep things a little easier, any salts, we have to look at whether they're soluble or not. So if the salts are soluble, they will be dissolved in water, they will be aqueous. Okay. If the salts are insoluble, then they're not going to dissolve in water, they're going to remain in the solid form. So whatever solubility guidance you've been provided with your teacher, you're going to use those to figure out whether you're going to put aqueous or solid for all salts. So any ionic compound, cation and anion. Okay. Now in single replacement, we have elements available. So for elements, we would go through and assign based on what it says on the periodic table or what it says on uh, any kind of sheet you've been given to kind of guide you in that process. Okay. So if I take a simple example here, I'm going to take sodium sulfate. That's something soluble in water. We're assuming it's in water, so we're going to put aqueous. And let's take barium chloride, which is also soluble in water. When we mix the two, we're going to form sodium chloride, which is of course soluble in water. So it's going to be aqueous. And we're going to form barium sulfate, which is insoluble in water. So we're going to put the solid. Okay? If we were to do a single replacement, say zinc plus copper two chloride. The zinc is a solid, it's just a metal, not going to dissolve in water. The copper 2 chloride is soluble in water. And then that's going to turn into zinc chloride, which is soluble in water, plus copper metal, which would be in the solid form. So for single replacement, the elements are going to kind of get treated separately, but for your ionic compounds, you're going to look at whether they're soluble or insoluble, and they're either going to be aqueous or, or solid. Okay. Now synthesis and decomposition, on the other hand, these we're going to assume are not in water because most of the times when you're doing a decomposition reaction, you're heating something or you're, you're running electricity or something like that through it. So for a lot of those things, we're going to not assume they're in water. That doesn't mean they can't be in water. Like a lot of uh, electrolysis could take place in solution, but we want to start with the assumption of not in water unless they're told otherwise because that's more frequent. So if I'm running calcium carbonate, heating that for decomposition, I'm going to assume that's not taking place in water. In that case, it's a salt, it's going to be in the solid form, barring really weird extreme conditions where it's incredibly hot, which could be the case, but they, let's wait for them to guide us in that direction first. So we're going to say solid calcium carbonate turns into calcium oxide and CO2. So carbon dioxide is of course a gas under regular conditions, especially if being heated, and the calcium oxide would still be in the solid state. Okay. For combustion, kind of depends on what you're what you're given and starting with. But basically your fuel, things that burn are in the gaseous state. So your fuel might be in the liquid state, but it's the it's the gas coming from that that's going to be what's actually burning. Even in the case of a candle, we have solid wax that melts. It's the it's the wax that's traveling up the wick and then escaping into the atmosphere that mixes with the oxygen and actually burns. So your fuel has varying levels of what you could assign it as. It could be assigned as a gas all the time or you could assign several for liquids where, you're, where you have a liquid and then it's burning, even though the gas particles are what are burning. So there's some flexibility with that, but your go-to assumption should be gas, unless prompted otherwise. If they say this liquid fuel is burned, maybe put liquid for that, okay? So your fuel is gonna be gas or other, and then you're adding that to oxygen. That's gonna be in the gaseous state, of course. We're going to form CO2, which is a gas, and then water. Now, when you're burning something, the water that gets produced is generally steam, but it can also cool down. So, gas or liquid is both acceptable for that. So, these are kind of your rough guidelines for how you want to go through and do states of matter. Now, from there, you're going to need some practice with looking up whether things are soluble or not, and then quickly you should start to find some trends like that the alkali metals and salts are always soluble, the nitrates are always soluble. Chlorides are always soluble except for a couple, and you're going to start to notice which ones are insoluble. Generally, it's ones with lots of charge or ones that you'll see a lot. Silver chloride, barium sulfate, calcium carbonate, calcium fluoride. There's going to be ones that kind of come up over and over again. Okay? 
For the single replacement, you need to be careful of not to over apply rules for ionic compounds to a situation where they don't make sense. Other than that, you're looking up what the element is and then whether it's soluble or not for the ionic compound. Synthesis and decomposition has a ton of variety. So you want to assume not in water at the beginning, but, but be wary that if you're running electrolysis on something, you probably need to be in the liquid state or you need to be in the aqueous state for that to be able to function. Okay.